let's say this pen is a knife. Okay, now a knife, the word knife is a fact, or the word gun is a fact. And it's laying here, and the, the police officer picks it up, and he says, the gun. Doesn't say for the gun, by the gun, of the gun, for the person's gun. He just says the gun. That was an adverb making gun a verb. The noun, or the fact, killed the person, but the verb was what was presented to the jury. That's misrepresentation. Wow. So therefore, this, this person here misrepresented his court, uh, his, his files. All clerks must have a four-year college degree in order to be a clerk of the court. To receive, to be port authority uh, officers, to receive the vessel to be docketed at the port of the court. Now, when it's docketed, the, juror, the clerk will usually look at it to see what department it goes to or reads it, but allows the modification of language from the police to come into the court, and then it goes to the sheriff's department, detective bureau, to do a further investigation, maybe check up on things at a secondary level before it's given to the barrister or DA, district attorney, to go out and then find the laws, rules, and regulations to fit the definitions that were, were brought to establish the violations of civil rights, okay? And then those points of information would be given to the judge. If the modification of language from the police officer and the clerk and the sheriff are not stopped and corrected because they can't read and write and they cheated on their civil service exams, high school exams, and uh, they're all part of the conspiracy, and the DA doesn't stop and correct it before he gets it to the judge, these guys all work together. None of them can read and write. It's just a big act. So are they guilty? Do they have knowledge? Well, I take their paperwork, and I syntax it, and I prove that everybody who touched this piece of paper in all things from the street to the, to the jury and back to the finished order from the judge making a determination that it's a lie. It's a syntax lie. Did they have knowledge? Absolutely, because it was mathematically certified by every one of them. It wasn't just where one made the mistake, they all made the same mistake. They all acted together. If we don't lie together, we will lay together. <laughs> so they all lie together. All right, now you have to give closure. Did any of these individuals give closure that they were going to use the modification of language to extort rights or to obstruct the information that was presented in the courtroom? The answer is no. None of them stopped to give closure as to use syntax to define the words and prove that they were wrong. So the closure of every one of these individuals participated. Did they port the knowledge into the court? In other words, did they docket the evidence? Yes, they were all guilty of docketing evidence to go ahead and damage somebody through fraud. Did they all participate in fiction language? The answer is yes. I have everyone that touched the documents had to sign off. So we have a signed confession that they all participated. And did they now port a correction? Once you, you have to give closure and port it, then you have to certify the fiction modification and port it. Yes, they all put it in. They all signed on to it. Did anybody stop and correct it? Nope, I do. Now, did they act together in a conspiracy? Anytime two or more people participate on a wrongdoing, you have a conspiracy. Now, that comes under Title 18, Section USC 3. That's an association after the fact that a a fraud has been perpetrated, and all individuals participated together to make that fraud go forward without obstructing. Title 18, USC 3. So the conspiracy first is brought as a civil. After the civil is argumented, then it's responsibility of the DA's office to go back and criminally prosecute everyone under conspiracy criminal, which carries a 15-year prison sentence and $15,000 fine. But when they modify language to extort money and privileges, it now goes up to $25 million and 30 years in prison. 
My program, however, carries 1,225 years of prison time and two and a half and six, I think it's up to $60 million in fines. Yeah, I only got to prove one to get all of it, <laughs> which is easy to do. Okay, now, did they obstruct? Absolutely. They obstructed evidence, they obstructed witnesses, they obstructed paperwork, because they modified everything from the original facts. Now, did they deprive the individual from having a, a correct trial, correct information, correct evidence, correct due process? The answer is yes. And so all these get checked off. Did they all act together to reduce this individual beyond the point of recovery to put him in a box in orange pajamas? The answer is yes. That's a 30-year prison sentence, Rico. Was the guy damaged? Well, I only got to prove one for damage, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times five. I got 50 damages. <laughs> is the guy damaged? Yeah, I think a jury would pretty well cite through that. Because you've got a chart on a whiteboard in front of a jury to make and take all the evidence, syntax it, define it, and educate a jury of 12. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that somebody lied, that somebody damaged, that the court was just a, an illusion. Now, if the guy committed murder, rape, major drug dealer, did some other kind of hideous crime, bank robbery, beat somebody to death, you know. These are, there, there are certain crimes in society. It doesn't matter what the language is. doesn't matter what the jurisdiction is. These people will be removed from society. They can't get out of it. There's no tricks or traps in truth or fiction that are going to get you, that are going to allow you to stay in society if you violate public safety. You know, there's a Star Trek episode where this individual, who was a lady, has knowledge of a dead re deadly virus that's going to be released on a planet to genocide the planet because two planets are at war. And Picard and the doctor are sitting there and they're discussing, why won't you tell us about this? He says, well, because I have, a I have to maintain confidence with my clients. And there's a war going on. And you have no jurisdiction to detain me. And the doctor says, well, you know what? A person has to be crazy to go out and kill a whole planet. Therefore, as a doctor, I have to medically certify that you're crazy because you're going to kill somebody. And therefore, we have to lock you up in a box, in a straitjacket for the rest of your natural life. Or you can cooperate with us and tell us what we know. <laughs> and the doctor has jurisdiction over the captain and over any other planet under public safety. And that was brought out. I think that was in uh, Evolutions, they brought that out. Because the, the Borg were going to go back to violate the time-space continuum to remove a certain issue. You see, so the public safety issue is still number one on the Borg, whether it be a Navy sales, uh, or rather a man entering a ship at sea or coming onto land, and throughout the airport. They have cameras everywhere watching people. Those cameras are now equipped with heat sensors. If you're walking through and you're glowing, I guarantee you the ATF are going to walk up to you and say, you have a fever, you have an infection. We don't know what you are, but you're going in quarantine. You're not going to get on this plane. You're not going to leave the country. You're not going to come into the country. So, you know, everybody's watching. There's always somebody watching. Technology today is to a level where they can stop diseases from being transported because you can, uh, they've established the fact that a terrorist doesn't necessarily have to carry anything. He just has to inject himself to be deadly and then move between point A and point B. And then when he gets there, he is the weapon. So they have all this new sophisticated equipment up there to monitor individuals between what is normal and what is not normal and then remove these people before they have a chance there's another thing to, for all those who, if you don't have the technology established here now, it is coming in the next few weeks. Uh, I was in L.A. airport, and the siren goes off. There's a, and it, you got signs up everywhere. When the buzzer rings, you will freeze. You will become a statue. If you move, you will be shot. 
and the lady's phone rang and she went to grab for it and she got tackled by two ATF agents because she moved and everyone, I mean, you got 10 lines of people going through inspection and the siren goes off because somebody moved or did something or they saw a device that was suspicious and before anybody could even move their finger to push a button, which would activate a detonator, Anybody moves, they get shot, and everybody's got their guns out. So if you walk into an airport and you see these signs, when, it, when the buzzer goes off, you better become a statue. And if you move, you could get shot. Because you're no longer in Australia. You're in a UN territory under a threat of terrorism. And everyone is a sus suspect. And so if you're going to, because I travel as much as I do, and I move in this world, I learn how to survive. And you're all guilty until proven innocent. <laughs> um, I used to be a private investigator, and they taught us that we have to write the reports in such a way that whoever reads it, their attitude should be, Guild, bring the guilty bastard in, we'll give him a fair trial. <laughs> um, OK, you mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned that all these things can be proven from one breaking of the law. So, so I want to confirm, does that mean that one document in um, adverb verb that's presented to the judge, that the judge uses to make a finding on, is enough to tick all these boxes you have here? That's it right there. Anything times a lie is a lie. Any times zero is a zero. Anything divided by is zero is a zero. So you've just given us the formula for winning 100 percent of everything. criminal action, any civil action, not done in quantum. Absolutely. Why do you think they're so upset? Am I allowed to swear? <laughs> Thank you. Um, there was oh, I do have one other question. Oh, and this. then and then the question is for the district attorney while I'm on the witness stand. So, Mr. Miller. Do you mean to say that we are going to let murderers, bank robbers, and rapists go free because we didn't use the correct syntax? My answer back was, why didn't you use the correct syntax in the first place so I don't have to come here and defend such a thing? You're the guy that went to college for 10 years. You're the guy that created the laws who were obstructed. Why didn't you fix it? I fixed it. I gave it to you. Why don't you fix it? You've got the answers. Fix it. And the judge says, there'll be no further questions, Judge Miller. He's making an ass out of the DA. Yes. I have a question somebody's asking to ask you. Um, yesterday, you put it um, in a box, um, that, uh, in a, some sort of pyramid style. Talking it's a about triangle, God. folks. It's got three sides. A pyramid has five sides. There's four sides to the pyramid, and it has a base. That was three. That was an ang a triangle. That was a triangle. Okay. Um, I could have used a circle and just wrote the numbers around a circle and put it in the middle. The point is, you have three elements. You will always be correct. You will honor your correctness, and there you will find your. Uh, yeah, you know, you will. You'll make a contract, and you'll write a correct contract, and you'll honor the correct contract. Okay. What's the first one? Create. The first one, you have, you have uh, uh, contract, honor, and duty. Okay. You know what duty means? Responsibility? It's not, huh? Responsibility? No, respo responsibility means no spoken. But responsibility and duty, duty is quantum, responsibility is adverb, verb. It's a lie. Duty is something you must do. A duty is a contract that you are sworn to uphold because you have an oath and a contract definition to perform that oath. That's why military personnel have duties. Civilians have responsibilities. Civilians are on a different plane than military. And military are under contract, and you have duties. And in a civilian world, you have orders, which means no contract. 
And in the duty of a military, you have commands, C-O-M, contract commands. If you don't follow your command, you get a bullet in the brain. In civilian, they put you in a box. Okay. So how does that affect what type of God you believe in? What kind of a God do I believe in? The God that, has, that I have researched to a thousand definitions that are unique to my understanding, which none of you are privy to because you weren't there when I studied my thousand definitions, which I syntaxed. You guys all studied your thousand definitions that were all separate from each other, so all of you have an independent definition of what God is, the same as the other six billion people out there who have their six billion gods. So the point is, everyone is unique. Man, God is created in man's image. The def synonyms of image is imagination, art, and creation. End of story. It can't get any simpler than that. It only takes 15 seconds to explain it. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to clarify something you, I think you said yesterday in relation to um, now working for the American military. Was it to put in place something in syntax to prevent them from any future prosecution against, was it genocide, war crimes, things like that? Well, okay, as muster master, what is a muster? A muster is an individual when you go on a cruise ship, the muster, you go to your muster stations, learn how to put on a life jacket, where to go to your lifeboats in the event the boat sinks after Titanic. Number two, you get onto an airplane. For those of you who have flown, the stewardess tells you how to put on a life jacket, how to put on a seat belt, what to do in the event the plane's going to crash. That's a muster. All musters are marshals. All airline stewardesses and personnel on cruise ships, which are musters, are also U.S. marshals. What does the word U.S. mean? United States marshals. Two or more people coming together in a closed area called a vessel, better known as charter vessel. Charter vessel means you paid, you get a receipt, bill of lading, you become cargo on a vessel. The cargo could be a ship, a plane, a train, a bus. That's why you always get a receipt. You get on your city bus, you're, a, you're on a charter vessel, you paid money, which made you a postal employee traveling under the Department of Transportation as a vessel which now became cargo on the bus, or the train, or the plane, or the boat, and so on. And it's all about maritime commerce and contracts. I'm a bit lost. How, how do you mean, though, in relation to, because if I understood it correctly yesterday, um, I may have misunderstood it, it sounded like in your working with them, it, it prevented them from any um, prosecution against... Um, no, what I said was, in the event a foreign government hire, hires their lawyer to write an adverb verb claim which I can syntax and say it doesn't say anything right. against anybody. And it doesn't matter if it's the United States military. I have eight treaties with 82 countries for this effect. Okay. In the event any country sues another country and they don't use the correct syntax, they're disqualified. Right. So if they do, if any military from any part of the world do commit some that sort I have of war a treaty crime, with, I will uphold my responsibilities and I will syntax it and I will prove beyond all reasonable doubt that it's either correct or incorrect. Good, okay, thank you. You know, the World Trade Center, when it went down, took out 3,800 people. There were 3,800 lawsuits filed for wrongful death. All 3,800 people who filed those claims put their, their name in uppercase spelling called a nom de guerre dead person. I took one case on called with the Mariana, uh, uh, Mariana was the lady's name, her husband died at the World Trade Center. And it was done as a syntax Title 42, long, uh, Title 42 lawsuit. That one lawsuit disqualified all 3,800 lawsuits. The government did not have to pay out a trillion dollars. Because how do dead people say they've been damaged? Very simple. And they wrote it in adverb verb, which disqualified under syntax their arguments. Again, the United States government didn't have to pay out a, million do a trillion dollars in damages. So, and the, and the judge on that case, when, it, when, it, when, when I filed my case, it took only a couple of days and the whole thing went mute. There was no public announcements made about it. The whole World Trade Center and all the lawsuits just kind of disappeared because they can't advertise syntax and give it credibility on a global basis because it would set up a chain reaction globally 
and disqualify insurances, money, uh, banking, mortgages, contracts, trade agreements. In other words, it's Pandora's box being opened. That's why everything went mute. Same way as Bill Clinton's sex trial got sealed. They can't let it out. They can't let Pandora's box out of the bag at this point yet till the whole world is brought up to speed simultaneously. So everything is being done covert, quiet, and allowing me to do these seminars. Yes. Yeah, Dave, just still going clarity on the um, the title, <laughs> title 41, 42. So um, are they, are they actually in your book? Yes, you everything's in there. Where There's a whole there? section on titles, whole section on dictionaries. I can't find them in. <laughs> Every single law, there's two lawsuits in there, civil, the divorce, in the back of each one of those. As you read through it, you'll see them specifically listed. They'll say Title 42, Knowledge. Every single time I use a title site, I also assign the definition to it, a short definition. And these titles... And then the there's expanded definitions in there uh, on each one of the titles and what they mean. So when we refer to a title, um, I know you said like, we do the, the tilde and with the number. Right. Um, and these are written in quantum. Where's, yes. Where's the original ones? Um, are they part of... The original ones in the United States codes or in your Australian codes are all written in adverb verb. If in, you use them... You, it's nonsense. In what sort of law? What? In any law, anything written in adverb verb is nonsense. I oh, no, I mean the title. I'm trying to still understand where titles come from. This is a closed area. The way you define your words in here, you're telling a specific, using the correct sentence structure, communication syntax, to identify what the words mean on your lawsuit. Not only do you have a definition assigned to a Title 42, 1986 for knowledge of the law and the right to stop and correct it, but you also have every word. What does the word knowledge mean? What does the word correct mean? What does the word and mean, or mean, is, are? All these words have to be defined independently as well as, well as in a complete sentence to be associated with that, that number Title 42, 1986. Mm. Title 42, 1986 says, in order for evil to flourish, good men must do nothing. If you witness a crime, you don't stop and correct it, then you're a party to the crime. If we were to... Um, Your country has the same laws as we do. All countries in the world have that same law. And where would I find that law in Australia? Uh, you'd have to go and look it up. In your revised statutes. statutes. Australian revised statutes. Statutes. <laughs> Yeah, okay. common law, criminal, yeah. Common law, criminal, criminal code oh, would be one place. Yeah. Civilian, yeah. civilian code. Uh, usually all you have to do is type in the word knowledge under Wikipedia, and it'll take you to a definition of knowledge. It might even give you a title site. Now, if you go into Black's Law Dictionary and you look up the word knowledge or criminal or conspiracy, you will have specific lawsuits with the case law, but the case law is written in adverb verb. It will also give you the title sites for those, and then that is cross-referenced through a central library on Lexis and Nexus, which is a worldwide internet for judges and attorneys and barristers in all languages. And you've got to be a member of Lexis and Nexus or an attorney with a code to get into that. Okay, it's not open to the public. They don't want the public being able to do their job for them. Question. Um, you said public safety was the number one law or rule or whatever. So how come with what happened in 9-11, it was a controlled thing? How come that was a massive public safety breach, obviously? They declared it to be an act of war so that they could avoid all the public safety issues, wrongful death, poisoning half of New York City with asbestos. And you know, the asbestos argument has never been made public to anybody, even though we got 50,000 people dying of cancer right now in New York City from asbestos exposure from the World Trade Center coming down and all the smoke that you saw was all asbestos being blasted all over the whole city. Talk about population reduction. 
<laughs> so how come people, everyone didn't notice the Arabs planting bombs in the buildings weeks before? Yeah, they didn't have technology like that. That wasn't a issue of a bomb. That was an issue of taking and creating an electromagnetic pulse. That kind of technology goes into uh, people who own a C4. You see, the Department of the Pentagon that was destroyed is where all the black ops is practiced. All the guys that deal in, in C4. What's the first rule of the assassin? Kill the assassin. So you get everybody together that was involved with that in the Pentagon and then kill everyone, 186 guys, in the same location. Anybody else that slipped through the cracks, they're going to be so afraid they'll never talk. Conspiracy theories. Whatever. You know, it's like I was at the Pentagon the day after a 737, 173 foot wingspan created an 8 foot hole, considering the fuselage is 20 feet across. <laughs> You figure that one out with no airplane parts around it. How did people, how, why are people gullible like that? I just can't understand it. Or Flight 93, the only plane in history to crash in the ground, making a hole 50 feet deep and 100 feet wide with no airplane parts around except one 50 pound piece of aluminum, which I think somebody brought and threw it on the ground. <laughs> Even the titanium motors, which have melting which, which, are, which are specifically built, the blades are specifically play, uh, built by Rolls-Royce, and they can withstand temperatures of 3,200 degrees. They all vaporize too. Hmm. <laughs> and there was no airplane residue, not even, not even fuel residue. Everything disappeared. Must have flew through a vortex, yes. <laughs> uh, just a couple of questions about stamps, David. Um, Values, the stamp values. Um, when do we use whole denominations? I always use whole denominations because if there's any discrepancy about fractions, there's no such thing as a fraction in law. That's right. That's Don't right. open it up. 19, uh, 18, 9, uh, 1873 for a two cent stamp. You could mail anything anywhere. That law has never changed. You can put a two cent stamp on any letter and send it anywhere in the world. It'll get there eventually. And they can't demand any more than two cents because that was the original postal treaty. But if you want to get it there and you don't want any hassles, put the right postage on it. Sure. It's just easier. Okay. Okay? Yep. Um, I guess I'm still trying to get my head around the whole concept of, um, not to get off topic, but you doing what you do um, and being allowed to continue doing it still with things like 9-11 taking place, them showing that um, whichever the powers that be who orchestrated that are prepared to go to such lengths to kill people, why would they see a language coming into the system as a better way than what they've done for so long as it is, and that's just killing people, controlling them, manipulating them, keeping them in fear? Why would this... I know you said it'll make a lot money. of people have not heard the program, don't right. even know it exists. Yep. And these are people that are still don't know, they don't know, and are still out there doing what they do because that's the only thing they do know. Yep. Once they've been exposed to this program, whether they accidentally get on the internet, have seen a videotape, been to a seminar, they absolutely can't go back and look themselves in the mirror today and say, I'm going to make a living going, becoming a liar. Just doesn't work. You're going to get caught. Everybody gets caught that lies. So. It's just, you know, with 400 million people already out there with this information, and it's only going to be a couple more years, and I'm going to have 51% of the population, and they're going to vote in correctness. I can understand that, but I guess I'm thinking that they would be aware of that, so why would they allow you to continue that? Wouldn't, because wouldn't. there's nobody that can replace, there's nobody out there qualified to do what I'm doing at a level to which I do it at. I've asked, yeah. answered all your questions, don't I? Who else is going to stand up here and answer your questions on all the different topics you guys come up with? Yep, and I've been doing that for 940 seminars. So it's in itself, it's an impossible task that, I, that I've made possible. I said, sure, anybody wants to do what I'm doing, fine. Stephen does it. And he, you know, if, if he doesn't know the answer, Stephen will say one thing. And this, this will go back to a story with, with Henry Ford, president of Ford Motor Company. I tell this at all the seminars. Young executive walks up to Henry Ford at one of the big shareholders meetings, and he's got all these 
big, important vice presidents around him and says, uh, Mr. Ford, may I ask you a question? Ford says, well, of course you can. And everybody goes silent. He says, what's the answer to this problem? He says, You're, you advertise the fact that you know the answers to everything. And he says, yeah, that's correct. So the man asks him a question. He says, phone, punches it up, calls his, calls his brains, his, his think tank of 200 IQs, asks the questions I need the answer in 15 seconds, gets the answer back, tells it to the man. Is that the correct answer? He says, yes, it is. He says, but you didn't know the answer. He says, but I know where to look. Oh, and by the way, you're fired. <laughs> Uh, one, just one final question. I guess it's just to appease my own sense of, I guess, good and bad as best you can judge it as an individual. Does um, your syntax, syntax language in any way facilitate um, stopping any future criminal proceedings against people who have in the past done crimes against humanity? No, not at all. So it can... Fiction in, fiction out. Fact in, fact out. Okay. And if an individual committed a crime, and he thinks he's going to use uh, truth to legalize his crime, and he knew it was a crime, because he'll, accident, he'll actually convict himself in his cross-examination of his argument. And if, if the government needs me, I don't care who you are, if you think you're smart enough to talk in syntax, I can get you to confess to anything in about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 seconds. I've got, I've got the knowledge to put the words together, and you'll feel all warm and fuzzy and participate. Thank you. I think it's a very small percentage of the population that understand the truth. Uh, how do you see the transition of the world waking up to this? Because when I first found out about the truth 18 months ago or so, I was, I was pretty pissed off. So how do you see the masses, if, if, if there is a 10 people knowing 10 people and an explosion of information that they've been lied to for eight and a half thousand years, how do you see that being managed? Well, how do you see that transition? Because people will only move as fast as their ability to comprehend an issue. When the judges and I get together, like I said yesterday, people are lazy. As long as they have their TVs and their their beer, they don't care where the tank parks. They will study for a while and they'll get tired. They'll go and, and experiment with a half, half truth and say it doesn't work because they don't have the full amount of information. Or they get tired or they don't have enough uh, spine to complete the task and they just quit. They drop off. It's easier to be part. It's like the movie in The Matrix. One of the guys says, I'm tired of living in a crappy submarine, eating crappy food. I want to go back to my illusion and have a steak and be somebody important in my dream world. And people are that way. They made those statements in the movie Matrix because the average person who has sued the government or who has brought action against the government as what you call the patriot groups or tax protests or groups or anything else, they find that the individual has an attention span of 24 months. That's it. And they're gone. They go back to, to their own little world of an illusion. I've been at this 30 years. I am the longest running individual worldwide that has stood up against the matrix because I have syntax and I have continually promoted and expand in define the accuracy in all the different parts of the world that it's going to touch upon. Setting up the constitutions, Robert's Rules of Orders, getting the, the trusts together, getting the organized people to teach them how to use a trust, to create a organized body of thinking, to appoint judges and how to elect judges, how judges have to think to make a determination as to what is right and what is wrong and know when they're being lied to. And so there's 1,800 branches of government that have to be certified. But the first issue is you've got to have a contract to explain what your job titles are. And that's what I'm doing. I'm teaching the syntax to get to the contract and writing the contracts as fast as I can at my own expense, publishing them nationally, worldwide on, the inter on my internet site, so that everyone can study equally at the same time. And I tell everybody, improve it. I'm one guy with a bunch of ideas, 
get together and tear it apart. Make it better. Always make it better. Today is the first day of the rest of your life, and every day you will beat your own record. Improve. Educate yourself. And you, you'll have a better world for both you and your children. Okay? On the subject of stamps and the values that we use, we've got gold stamps, and then we're just talking about stamps with whole denominations and not using fractions. Now, we've had the instance where we use claim of the life and we use a gold stamp, and then in other documents we're using whole value stamps, but we have had occasion where we've used stamps like 55 cents. So... Yeah, I use 42 cent stamps on service documents. I put the $1 stamps on my court filings for docketing stuff. So with the stamps that when we Still makes you a postmaster transporting the vessel. When we've used a fraction, that would be because that stamp has already been authorized by the fiction as being valid for the transport of the vessel. Of right. The In other words, the, the governments have set up the fact that it's, it costs 42 cents US and maybe 55 cents Australian to transport one ounce of weight which is your class A letter or, cla or first class mail, which has been established worldwide in all denominations. And it is, uh, you, then you go to your foreign exchange and you have your uh, exchange rates between countries and currencies. So and everything is directly proportional, it's the same worldwide. So working with the reverse of that, if a court wasn't to accept your document because it had a 55 stamp on it, they'd have to be disqualifying the Universal Postal Union. <laughs> yeah. So, so and they're paid by the port authorities and the judges are postmasters, so therefore they would be shooting themselves in the foot. And then they're also acknowledging that you've actually carried out a correct process, but they're trying to find a hole in it. And then that would expose the fact that they're, not, they're never doing the right process. With their That's correct. And all the rest of the lawsuits would now become null and void by their own self-confession. And it's time for a break. <laughs> <laughs>